Hello, and welcome to <clears throat> episode 36 of Things I Learned from Barry Harris. Today I thought we would keep on the idea of working on movement. <clears throat> and in this episode we'll discuss the movement of the one chord to the four minor chord. <clears throat> now sometimes there's the one chord to the one dominant to the four major to the four minor, which happens in songs. But other times there's just the one chord, which is major, into the four minor. Now the way Barry likes to look at it, if we did in the key of C, the chords that you're comping are like C major and then F minor 7, would be the 4 minor. But Barry thinks of that as C major scale, and we'll decide how long we're going to do them for in a second. And then for F minor 7, he sees that as B flat 7. So there's your two scales that you have to know. Now depending on how long the actual uh, chord change is, this is where it gets a little bit, uh, you have to become familiar with how to feel how long it is. For instance, if we were taking um, Charlie Parker's Yardbird Suite, which is starts on the one chord, right away it goes into it. So it's a measure of C major, and then right away a measure into F minor, or Barry thinks of a measure of B flat 7. So, if we were going to do the scales to that little first part, it would just be C major up, and then right away B flat 7 up. Now that gets you into the mindset of what you have to play. So let's just take Yardbird Suite for a second, and we'll say, okay, so how do you tackle playing that movement from 1 to 4 minor? So one way that Barry likes to do it is he'll say, okay, well, what two notes of this surround this, or what two notes of the C major scale. So if we take, for instance, um, in C major, we'll take the three and the five. Now the note that that surrounds would be the four of the C major true, but it would also be the five of the B flat seven or the tonic of the F minor. But we'll just think of it as five. Now, one of the important things that he talks about is on a dominant, again, I re reviewed these in one of the earlier episodes, there's important arpeggios. And what he considers an arpeggio is a triad with them with the bottom note repeated on top. Those are arpeggios. So what he says is, on a dominant, <clears throat> there's an important arpeggio found on the five. And that five, that important arpeggio, is a minor arpeggio. So, keeping that in mind, if we said, and we ended on this, we could conceivably say, okay, well, let's just come down the arpeggio. So, there's a phrase already. So, if we say, one, two, three, ended by saying, and then I ended the 6 of the B flat 7, came down to the 5, and then I came down to the 3rd of C major, because now we're already back to C major, so we played C major for a measure, we played F minor 7 for a measure, or B flat 7 for a measure, and then we played back into C major, so if we try it, 1, 2, 3, little movement is what I want you to try to focus on. Another thing, let's say if we came up a triad from the five. So let's try that one. One, two, three, two, three. So now I came down, I surrounded the tonic, and then I came down a chord from the second of the B flat seven. And I could have added two more notes, and maybe did it twice, and then ended on the fifth of um, C major. So let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So now we just, we're using the things that we know for 
<clears throat> C major and the things that we know for B flat seven. So maybe let's do let's do um, let's do five. <laughs> So let's see what that sounds like. One, two, three, four. So that was nice. So it's when we finished five, now once we get to the two of the C major, that's already now the three of the B flat seven. So I just played down to the flat seventh of the B flat seven. So let's try that again. One, two, three, four. finish it up with which would be six five six and then sliding into the major third of the C major so one two three four <clears throat> now what I'm hearing in my head is this I'm hearing that in my head. So I'm feeling one measure of C major, one measure of F minor 7, or one measure of B flat 7, or two beats of F minor 7 to B flat 7, but it's still the same sound to me. So I try to create phrases from exactly that. <clears throat> Let's say we start on the three of the C major, right on the first beat. One, two, three, four. perfect if we started on the first beat. So I came down the C major scale. No half steps. And then I ended on the four of the B flat seven. And I came down a chord. And then I hit the major third of, uh, of the B flat seven. So one, two, three, four. Not the prettiest phrase in the world, but I just want to show you that that's what you can do. Maybe let's put a half step and see what that sounds like. Okay, that's another little thing that sometimes people do. I'll show you. One, two, three, four. So sometimes, besides B flat seven, Franz Elson used to talk about this with Barry too, which is this F minor. He doesn't see it as having a minor seventh. He likes to see it as having a major seven. So he likes to hear this sound. There it is. So he likes that sound. That's a nice phrase, actually. One, two, three. But probably triplets would be nicer with it. Let's see. That's nice. Two. Three. Let's see. Nice phrases. But this is how you're supposed to tackle playing a movement. You say, I really have to know my C major things. I really have to know, you know. So anything that you normally practice, triads, let, let's try Barry's um, chromatic scale. <clears throat> so let's say one, two, let's do the chromatic scale, which for those of you who don't know, I, it's in one of the episodes earlier, and it's, it's uh, labeled Barry's chromatic scale. So let's say Barry's chromatic scale. Let's try it from the five, which would be... So let's try that. One, so let's see what we do after that. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay, so let's see. So all I did was, and once I got to the tonic, then I played the four of the uh, B flat seven. So. So now, again, triads, playing a chord up. What if we played a chord up from the three? Let's see. So 
we did a chord up from the three of the C major. And then when we came down, when we got down to the fifth, we thought of that as a, uh, the sixth of the um, B flat seven, so we came down a chord. Let's see. So we put in one half step between six and five. So again, taking C major and practicing things in B flat seven. Let's do some half steps with B flat seven. Let's say. Um, uh, maybe we'll do a prettier one than that. Let's see. Let's try a. Uh, so I I. Um, I started my half steps from the three of the uh, E flat seven, and I surrounded the three of the C major. So I said, so that was uh, one half step between tonic and seven of B flat seven. But see, these are just this is the reason that you have to know all the previous things and all the previous episodes that we worked on is because once you get those in your fingers, now it starts to come alive in your hand. Now you say, okay, now I can start to run one thing into the next thing. Now some of those phrases are not the greatest thing in the world, but those are mine. Or there's something that's influenced by somebody else and it's, it's all influenced by Charlie Parker and Bud Powell and of course Barry, but this is, this is my creation that I'm trying to come up with. Now maybe Barry's played some of those or maybe Bud Powell's played some of those, but I'm really trying to keep it to just things that I like to do. Same thing for you. That's what I want everybody who's watching these videos to be able to do. That's why his method, I feel like, is the greatest method. It's because it allows me to know the same information as you, yet if we played together, we would come up with totally different phrases and we could play all day and play totally different things and not play Charlie Parker licks or Bud Powell licks. We could play our own licks, things that we've worked on, things that we've checked out. That's very important. Now, just to close, you could also play, um, um, let's see, the, there's another song that does one to four minor, which would be in, um, what is that called? Uh, Ladybird. Uh, now, that's a little bit longer. That's C major for two measures, and then F minor 7 for a measure, B flat 7 for a measure. So now you have twice as long to mess around with C major and then running into F minor or running into B flat 7. So that's a whole other thing for you to think of now in your head. Oh, okay, now I have two measures of each thing. So maybe we'll talk about that in a future episode, but that's longer. So you got oh, two measures of C major and two measures of F minor 7. Anyway, I hope this episode was helpful. Enjoy practicing your one to four minor. I hope to make a few more within the next uh, couple of weeks. Anyway, thanks again. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.